Again, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Jessica. In part one, I talked about what is burnout and how is it different from laziness? And in this second part, I want to talk about how to actually get out of burnout and how to come through on the other side. So let's dive in. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Jessica. I'm a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist as well as a health coach. And online, I help clients overcome the symptoms of chronic stress and prevent or recover from burnout. So in the previous video, we talked about burnout. We talked about how it sucks. We talked about what it is. And now let's talk more about what to do with it. And I have kind of four steps that I like to use or four phases that I generally talk about in making that recovery or that U-turn from burnout. And I've broken it down into four kind of general steps that you need to take in order to see yourself through to the other side. The very first step is to actually become aware that the situation is critical or either the situation, depending on what stage you're in, that the situation is not going to reverse itself unless you do something different. Be aware that, you know, you're headed towards burnout or you're in the burnout phase. Just be okay with it in the moment, but just embrace the fact that that's where you are. Because the first step to actually changing something is becoming aware of it. And then the next step is to become aware of the possibility that it can actually be different. And this is why I focus a lot on mindset inside of my program, inside of my coaching program, the Better Health Blueprint, is that you actually need to believe that it can be different. Because if you don't believe that it can change, if you just believe that, oh, I'm getting older and this is just the way it is now, if you truly believe that, I don't care what intervention you add, you can go to all the therapists, you can take all the medication, but nothing will change. Nothing changes until you change your mind about it or you change your way of thinking. I have seen it time and time again, but you, you have to first become aware that it can be different. You have to actually start to believe it. And even if you don't believe it, at that moment in time, because the biggest thing about changing when you, when you feel down, you feel beat up, you feel depressed, you feel exhausted. The hardest thing is to actually imagine that it can feel different. The hardest thing to actually overcome is that feeling of the depression, that feeling of the anxiety, that feeling of, oh my God, this is never going to change. This is my life now. But if you can hold on to that belief and you can start to cultivate that feeling of what it would be like to be different and actually believe that it can be different, then you're well on your way to actually starting to make changes that are going to better serve you. And then the next kind of crucial step is to actually slowly start to make changes. Usually what I see is that you know, you, you hit bottom, you are, you know, down, you're exhausted and you want to change everything all at once, right? You want to go completely raw, vegan, organic, or you want to go, <laughs> um, completely meditating for four hours or whatever, whatever it is that you kind of latch onto, but you realize you need to change. You're aware it can be different. And then sometimes because of all the information that is out there, you want to change everything all at once. But I recommend you go slow and you go steady. Adapting what I call, I call it the baby, the baby step phase. You take a tiny change, you know, say you've gone crazy with your food because, you know, you're too tired to cook, you're feeling exhausted and like usually you just stop and get fast food or you're just eating out all the time or you're, you know, making macaroni and cheese and wine for dinner every night. What I would generally say is, okay, let's start somewhere and let's just commit to cooking one or two meals for the week. That's it. That's it. Just something very small because then you're going to be able to do that and you're going to be able to maintain it. And then you're going to build on that. That momentum when you start to make those baby steps is so real and it is so powerful. So instead of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, why not just take smaller steps and go very slow with it and see that progress and build upon it? You have to start to take those small steps towards self-care. So for me, when I was burned out, again, click the link above. I think it'll be on this side. Click the link above to learn more about my personal journey with stress and burnout. Um, but for me, take one baby step I could make was to actually read fantasy novels. 
I do a lot of reading, a lot of research for clinical purposes, as well as for my coaching practice. And I am usually always very eager to learn about something. Um, during that time, mm -mm. but when I started to recover and come out, the one thing I could do was actually read fantasy novels because they gave me hope. They brought me a little bit of joy. They actually helped me to believe that things could be different and things could be happier. Things could be more joyful. So whatever that is, when you start to take those baby steps, just embrace it, just go with it and just move in that direction. So it can be the smallest of things. For me, it was, all right, I'm just going to read five pages. Usually it ended up being more than that, but I wasn't about to meditate. I wasn't about to do yoga. I wasn't about to, I wasn't about to go work out but I could read a book. And that was, that was the baby step that worked for me. And that was the first of many steps. The important thing is that you realize you do have to start somewhere. And then the fourth thing you actually need to add, and again, this goes along with the other steps, is that you actually need a plan. And you probably need some support and some guidance from somebody who's either been there or does that day in and day out. And that is exactly what I do inside of my coaching program, The Better Health Blueprint. It is not just an online course. It is not just a coaching program where we have weekly calls. And it is not just functional analysis looking at your labs and what you need. But it's creating those healthy habits and helping you cultivate them and helping you decide what you want and you need in your life and giving you the tools to decide what works for you and what doesn't work for you without all the fluff. And sometimes that expert guidance is exactly what you need. So be it reaching out to someone like me, be it seeing your primary care or your functional medicine specialist, your energy worker, your acupuncturist, I don't care, but reaching out and getting some help and some guidance from someone is really crucial in helping you create a plan that's actually going to work and that's actually going to be successful. And also having that guidance and that expertise sometimes will also help when you can't actually see the way out or you can't see the necessary steps to take. So do not be afraid. That is not a sign of weakness to reach out and admit like, hey, I am burned out. I cannot see it through to the other side and I need some help. So if you want to learn more about how I can help with my program, The Better Health Blueprint, click on the link in the description box. I also have a webinar or a masterclass where you can learn more about my philosophy in that program and how I use, you know, these four pillars of mindset, sleep, nutrition, as well as exercise combined with functional analysis to help you get to where you want to go, get you to feeling more increased vitality and more mental clarity. All right. I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with someone that you know who might benefit from it. Be sure to subscribe, hit the not notification bell so that you can know when I post a new video next week. And otherwise I will see you in the next video. Bye.